All right, guys, learning targets five and six are going to go together, um, and we are going to be adding and subtracting polynomials and then multiplying polynomials. All right, and we're going to um, learn first what a polynomial is. So um, a polynomial is a set of terms, okay? Um, let's first talk about a term. A term is book definition, and you'll pause this to get the definition down, an algebraic expression that represents only multiplication and division between variables and constants. For example, this is a term, this x cubed is a term, 6x squared is a term, and 9 is a term, okay? Terms are separated by either negative or, or minuses or pluses, basically. Addition or subtraction separates the terms. So the terms here are 3 or x cubed, 6x squared, and 9 are the different terms. If we write another one, um, we could have 4xyz. That together would be a term because we're multiplying and divide or and or dividing in there. Okay? Or oops, excuse me. We could have 4x divided by y. That's also a term because multiplication and division are the only things used there, all right? The polynomial, then, is a sum of terms that have positive integers for exponents, all right? So the polynomial is when it's all added or subtracted together, okay? It's, all, it's the expression itself, all right? And we have different types of polynomials, all right? And we'll get to that. Um, we can have binomials. Um, trinomials, this would be a trinomial because it has three terms, okay? We have mononomials, which are just one term, so this would be one term. Um, this would be a binomial, x cubed minus 6x squared, because it has two terms. This is a trinomial. And then anything bigger than a trinomial, we just call a polynomial, all right? So poly meaning many, if you guys don't know what the prefix poly means, it means many. All right, so we can do some stuff with these polynomials. We can add and subtract polynomials. And basically, it's just like um, what we've been doing with adding like terms. We find the things that are alike, so 5x squared is like 8x squared, all right? And then we just add those together. So when we have 5x squared and 8x squared, we have all together 13x squared, okay? Then we find we have negative 3x, and positive 10x, so all together that's positive 7x, all right? And then finally we have positive 7, and oops, I'm going to do something else. Um, we have positive 7 and negative 25, all right? So that gives us um, same sign add and keep different sign subtract. 25 minus 7 is going to give us a negative 18, all right? So that's how you add polynomials. Subtracting polynomials is a little more difficult. All right, now we can think of it in two ways. We can think of it as finding the same things, and this time I'm going to use color. So we have eight or x cubes and x cubes. We have x's and x's. Um, notice that we have an x squared here, but it's by itself. Um, and then we have, let's just make the x squared be by itself. And we have just constants by themselves, just numbers, all right? So we're going to take those and do the same thing, except now we're, we're subtracting. So 8x cubed minus 7x cubed is just 1x cubed. Now, according to best math practices, we go in order of exponents. So then I'm going to take my... Now, I don't have any x squareds over here, but I have an x squared over here. So let's pretend we have 0... X, I mean, and we're not pretending, we do have 0x squared over here, minus 3x squared. Um, so then that's going to be a negative 3x squared, or just 1x cubed minus 3x squared. Then we have 4x minus negative 15x. So minusing a negative is going to add, so we're going to have positive 19x. And then 10 minus a negative 30, and this should be um, highlighted with that, and this should be highlighted with that, because it's a ne those are negative numbers. So 10 minus a negative 30 is 
a positive 40. Right? So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to just see, once you see this negative, make it a plus sign and change the sign of everything in here. All right? So distribute that negative. Negative 1 times this, times this, times this, times this. There's two ways to do that then. And you're going to have the same thing then because then you're going to have 8x cubed um, plus a negative 7x. So that's going to still be 1x cubed. You're going to have 0x squared plus a negative 3x. So that's going to be still negative 3x squared. You're going to have 4x plus 15x now. So that's a little easier to write and that's going to be 19x. And then you're going to have 10 plus 30 now. That's a little easier to see that that's 40. So if you like distributing that negative, do that first. I think that makes life easier. If you like thinking about subtracting each one, that's great, but it gets difficult when you're subtracting negatives. You just have to remember that. Okay, so that's adding and subtracting polynomials. We're going to move on now to multiplying polynomials, okay, using the distributive property. And we've used the distributive property before. We just use it in distributing that negative. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do those swoops that you guys have seen before. Two swoops of multiplication. Here we're going to have three swoops of multiplication. All right. You're just swooping everything from the outside to the inside. So first we have 5x times x. Well, that's 5 times x times x. x times x is x squared. So that's just 5x squared. And then we have 5 times a negative 7 is a negative 35 and we're reduced there. And remember, we don't have an equal sign, so that's as simplified as we can go. Here we have 3 times x squared, that's 3x squared. We have 3 times 7x, that's 21x. And we have 3 times a negative 10, that's negative 30. Okay, so these are both polynomials. This is a binomial, this is a trinomial. Two terms, three terms, right? highest exponent of 2, highest exponent of 2, and then we have an exponent of 1, and then an exponent of 0, 2 to 0. Um, that's how we write these things, okay? Another type of multiplying polynomials is called the FOIL method. That's when we have two sets of parentheses, all right? So we can think of the, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute, okay? So we're gonna, we could distribute that way and then that way. This time we're just going to distribute twice. But they've come up with this. Somebody realized that the, there's a kind of a trick to distributing twice, and that's called the FOIL method. So we're going to take the firsts, so the first term in each set of parentheses. Then we're going to take the outsides. Then we're going to take the insides. And then we're going to take the lasts. All right? So when I do the first, that's x times x. That's going to give me x squared. Then I'm going to do the outsides, x times 9 gives me 9x. Then I'm going to do the insides, negative 7 times x gives me negative 7x. And then I'm going to do negative 7 times 9, and so I have a negative times a positive, that gives me negative 63. All right? Now, am I reduced here? No. I need to simplify. I need to add like terms. So I have x squared, and then 9x minus 7x is 2x minus 63. Okay? All right. And then x minus 10, I'm going to do firsts. x times x is x squared. And then I'm going to do outsides. x times 1 is 1x. Insides, negative 10 times x is negative 10x. And last, negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Add like terms, x squared plus or minus 9x minus 10. All right? We're also going to learn about a box method. We can use um, these boxes. You're going to see this in the investigation. Um, and we could put um, these terms out here. So we could say x minus 10 and x plus 1. So what happens here is that 
we can find the area of the inside of these boxes. So the area of this small box would be x squared. The area of this small box would be 1x. The area of this small box would be negative 10x. And the area of this small box would be negative 10. And it gives us these exact terms. So then we can say these two are alike, and we again have x squared minus 9x minus 10. All right, so we'll see that in the investigation. Just wanted to give you a sh little preview there. Um, you're going to now try to solve this question, x plus 4 squared. How do you FOIL that? Think of a few things first. What is 6 squared? What is 36? But really, they're asking you to do 6 times 6. What is x squared? Well, that's just x times x, right? What is smiley face squared? That's just smiley face times smiley face, right? Anything squared is itself times itself. So what is x plus 4 squared? What's that going to be? Use these to guide your thinking and then FOIL that once you have there. So you should end up with something that looks like something you can FOIL. These we can FOIL. This doesn't look like we can FOIL it, so turn it into something we can FOIL. What if, if 6 squared is 6 times 6, x squared is x times x, smiley face is squared is smiley face times smiley face. What is x plus 4 squared? Try that for class, and we will talk about it then.